Hello, welcome to our online worship service for Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend. I'm Pastor David Schub, and we're thankful Pastor Christy Schub is back with us after recovering from surgery. It is certainly a gift to us. We have entered the Advent season. Um, if Mike wants to pan back for a second and show you the trees um, as we start to move toward the celebration of Christmas, um, we're thankful that you can join us on this journey as we prepare for the coming of our Lord, not just in remembering it in the past, but also as the Lord comes to us today in our lives when, we, when Christ is most needed. Um, with that, we begin with our thoughts for the day. Our first thought is from Meister Eckhart. We are all meant to be mothers of God, for God is always needing to be born. And then from Rosalind Brown, our world is full of injustice and unrighteousness. So something has to give where God enters the world, and it's not going to be God. Our call to worship. Come, let us prepare ourselves with open hearts for the familiar Christmas story. And hear the angel's disturbing message. God comes to the weak and lowly. Then, like Joseph, swept up in events we cannot control, but with firm faith in God. Let us make room for Jesus in our lives. Please join me in our confession prayer. Loving, Loving God, God, in our, in our weakness, weakness, we cry out for you to come. come. We, we do, do not look deep enough to see you in the midst of difficulty, to find you inside our anxious longing. We do, we do not recognize you in our longing for someone or something to help us when we are not strong enough to face the world. We place, we place our hopes in some mighty conqueror and, and miss the strength of the love which is offered to us by the child in the manger. Persistent God, open us to seeing you in the paradoxes of life. Give us reason to smile, knowing you are born in the midst of weakness and need. Be born in us. Amen.
Well, traditionally, every Advent, we light candles of the Advent wreath to remind us of the movement toward the coming of the Lord. This year, we're kind of our theme for the year is be born in us. And so we remember as we light this first candle that Christ comes to us in the midst of our weakness and need, our longing for a Lord to set us free. Today we have two readings. The first is from 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 9th verse. But God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. And then from the first chapter of Luke, the Magnificat. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of God's servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. God's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. God has shown strength with God's arm. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of God's mercy, according to the promise God made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Be born in us as we approach the celebration of your birth. 
I read a piece quite a while ago now about the danger of the church sometimes getting caught up in trying to repristinate Christmas in our celebration. Well, first of all, I had to rush to the dictionary and look up the word repristinate, though I could kind of figure it out from the context in the article. The definition was repristination, the act of restoring something to its original condition, the act of making something pristine again. The problem this article pointed out, and it is the truth, is that you can never do it. No matter how hard you try, you cannot recreate what happened long ago. And yet Christmas is one of those things that I think we often try with all our might to restore to its original form. We try to get the mood just right. The mood of that quiet night of hay and awe and wonder. We try to get the feelings just right of joy and amazement. We try to get the picture just right in our minds and in the world around us. The article I read so many years ago said that our worship at Christmas should not be an attempt to repristinate what happened so long ago, but instead a welcoming of that reality into our lives today. Our worship needs to be about entering the story in our own lives. That's why for years I've been fascinated by the words of Meister Eckhart that we had as kind of one of our thoughts for the day. We are all meant to be mothers of God, for God is always needing to be born. We don't need to bring the past into the present to try to recreate what was. We need Jesus to be born into this place, among us. One of the most beloved of Christmas carols, O Little Town of Bethlehem, says it really plainly in one verse. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. Be born in us. That's the focus of our Lenten journey this year as we move toward the celebration of Jesus' birth. Be born in our lives. Help us embody and be the expression of your love in a world that desperately needs it in all these years later. Our world in so many ways is not that different than the world of the original Christmas. Maybe that can help us understand why it's so important for Jesus to be born right here and right now. At that first Christmas, Jesus was born to those who were weak and oppressed. The power of the Roman Empire held Israel under the boot of its imperial power. The birth of Jesus begins in Luke's gospel with these words, In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. But Jesus is not born among the houses of those great rulers that seem to run the systems of the world, but to the people of Judea, who in this world have little strength and little power. God comes to a young couple forced by these powers to travel a great distance to be registered, who according to Matthew's gospel will later become refugees themselves. And in our gospel from Luke today, the mother of the child sees in this child the anticipation of the beginning of a new reality in which the weak and the lowly are lifted and a new day will begin. Jesus comes to the weak and vulnerable in all of us. Paul, in our lesson from 1 Corinthians, sees hope for all of us in the birth because we all live in weakness and vulnerability. We long now in our weakness for God to come here, to come to us, to bring strength and hope when life threatens to totally overwhelm our meager resources. Quite a few years ago, I found a book that somehow touched something deep within me. It's actually an older book. It's a book called The Man of the House at Huffington Row. Our uh, music coordinator, Hazel Griffin, got me a copy of the book after I talked about it because I seemed so excited about it. It's a beautifully written story 
of a young boy named Francis O'Shea, whose family is struggling during the Depression after his father's death. They have no wealth. They have no power. Francis' mom is forced to take in laundry. And Francis, well, he spends all his time working and helping his mother and keeping his little sister out of trouble. Shortly into the book, he goes to a large church in town and finds his sister cradling one of the angels from the crush scene there, which is what she does oftentimes. She, she loves those little angel figures. The choir master of the church startles her, yelling at her for playing with the figures, and she drops the precious angel, and it shatters. The choir master chases her out of the church and tells her to never come back. In the process, she loses her scarf, one of her most cherished possessions because it came from her father. Francis and many of the local people look for their scarf, but they can't find it. Francis' sister Mary goes to bed, somewhat heartbroken. No angel, no scarf. Francis goes out to take care of the snow, to remove it from the sidewalks, and he decides he'll take care of his sister by making a snow manger. He manages to get a Mary and a Joseph made and finds a box to serve as a manger, but by then he's starting to freeze and his mother makes him come back inside. He feels he's failed. He couldn't make the manger his sister needs. He didn't get the angels, her favorites, done. His mom tries to tell him that he's done a miracle, but he replies, I don't believe in miracles. The next morning when he wakes up, he hears his sister shout. He goes down and finds his snow manger completely done. During the night, the neighbors have come. They saw what he did and completed his work. His sister is especially fascinated by the snow angel that was made. And there's her scarf, wrapping the baby Jesus. And the last line of the book is, And he believed. Whenever we choose to stand with those who are weak and broken and hurting, in those moments Christ is born anew, born in us. Mother Teresa in the book Life in the Spirit wrote, It is Christmas every time you smile at your sibling and offer them your hand. It's Christmas every time you remain silent and listen to another. It's Christmas every time you turn your back on the principles that oppress the poor. It's Christmas every time you hope with the prisoners. It's Christmas every time you recognize in humility your limitations. It's Christmas every time you let God love others through you. When we stand with those in greatest need in the world around us, and we touch them with the love of God, that comes to us in Jesus Christ. Christ is born in us. Not long ago, but in that very moment. Norman Vincent Peale tells a story about one Christmas that brought to him a revelation. He writes, Some of my most impressionable boyhood years were spent in Cincinnati. I still remember the huge Christmas tree in Fountain Square, the gleaming decorations, the streets ringing with the sounds of carols. Up on East Liberty Street, where we lived, my mother always had a Christmas tree with real candles on it, magical candles, which combined with the fir tree gave off a foresty aroma, unique and unforgettable. One Christmas Eve when I was 12, I was out with my sister, farther, or with my minister father doing some late Christmas shopping. He had me loaded down with packages, and I was tired and cross. I was thinking how good it would be to get home when a beggar, a bleary-eyed, unshaven, dirty old man, came up to me and touched my arm with a hand like a claw and asked for money. He was so repulsive that I instinctively recoiled. Softly, my father said, Norman, it's Christmas Eve. You shouldn't treat a man that way. I was unrepentant. Dad, I said, he's nothing but a bum. My father stopped. Maybe he hasn't made much of himself, but he's still a child of God. He then handed me a dollar, a lot of money for those days and for a preacher's income. 
I want you to take this and give it to the man, he said. Speak to him respectfully. Tell him you're giving it to him in Christ's name. Oh, Dad, I protested. I can't do anything like that. My father's voice was firm. Go and do as I tell you. So reluctant and resisting, I ran after the old man and said, Excuse me, sir, I give you this money in the name of Christ. He stared at the dollar bill, then looked at me in utter amazement. A wonderful smile came to his face, a smile so full of life and beauty that I forgot that he was dirty and unshaven. I forgot that he was ragged and old. With a gesture that was almost courtly, he took off his hat, graciously said, And I thank you, young sir, in the name of Christ. All my irritation, all my annoyance faded away. The street, the house, everything around me suddenly seemed beautiful because I had been a part of a miracle that I've seen many times since. The transformation that comes over people when you think of them as children of God, when you offer them love in the name of a baby born 2,000 years ago in a stable in Bethlehem, a person who still lives and walks with us and makes his presence known. That was my Christmas discovery that year, the gold of human dignity that lies hidden in every living soul, waiting to shine through if only we give it a chance. At times when I'm struggling with my self-worth, with failures and my own weaknesses and smallness in the face of the world, the Christ child does come, comes to me, to all of us as a reminder that God has claimed us as God's children. And God does that by taking on our existence, our flesh. That's what we talk about in Christianity when we talk about the incarnation in the flesh. So we too need to stand taller to help others find the dignity and self-worth and strength that is the gift of God to all people. I want to close with a poem from Lisa Swanson Felidia. She writes, Who am I that I should have your coming revealed to me? I am poor, unwashed, a shepherd, a farmer, a merchant, a laborer. I am a woman, a man, a person, a parent, a child. I'm just these. Who am I that news of your birth comes to me through the glorious singing of the heavenly host? I am no one in the world. My voice has no sound in the world. My thoughts have no audience in the world. And these who stand beside me, who are they? All of us, broken vessels, imperfect sinners, Yet we will announce your birth with shouts and joyous laughter. Perhaps we will not be believed, but no matter. For we know who we are. We are the chosen of God. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to people on earth. This coming among us is what we'll focus on throughout Advent, that Christ is born in us constantly if we leave room for the Savior to enter in. In the coming weeks, we'll be doing this through like individual little sections of a cantata that have been split into three parts to cover the three weeks. And I hope you'll be able to join in that worship with beautiful music with thoughts of what it means for God to come today, not just long ago. And so throughout this Advent season, we pray, come Lord, and be born in our weakness. Amen. Thank
marshal is waiting to start. The Spirit will teach us the song of the heart. For Christmas comes into the here and the now. Through peacemaker people, the just and the gentle, the stars will light the new world. Whoever will take it. As God's people called to love one another, let us pray for the needs of the church, the human family, and all creation. Loving God, we begin our prayers with the words of a hymn. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us our Lord Emmanuel, God of mercy. Hear our prayer. Be born in us amidst the need of our brothers and siblings, or our siblings in Bangladesh, where 20 million people, 13% of the population, along the coastline suffer from increased salinity in their fresh water supply due to sea level rise. Come to us in the midst of our siblings' need in Chad, Nigeria, and, and Niger, and Cameroon, who have seen Lake Chad shrink by 95% in 60 years, eliminating a life-giving source of water for farming, livestock, grazing, and fishing as a result of dramatic weather changes. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. Be born in us in the midst of our siblings in Kenya, Ethiopia, Somalia, and South Sudan, where up to 20 million people are fighting for their very survival. The threat of extreme hunger, loss of animals and crops, both from drought and violence, are forcing people to spend their life savings, to leave their homes after four years of unbearable drought, influenced by climate change and political instability in East Africa. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. Be born in us in the midst of the people of Ukraine, where war continues, in the midst of Jerusalem, where violence has once more risen up, in the midst of mass shootings here at home, and in the midst of the violence which seems to seize our world. Come and bring your peace, God of mercy. Hear our prayer. Be born in, among us in the midst of hunger and homelessness, amidst the great plenty of others. Be born among us in the refugees seeking a home, and also amidst us who have a home, but often need a reminder of your abundance. Be born in your church and among those who are seeking you in the world. Come and be born among us, God of mercy. Hear our prayer. Be born among us in the midst of the needs of those we know and love. Brian, Jeff, Sue, Margie, Tom, Ron, Carrie, Jay, Mick, Catherine, Jacob, Val, Eileen, Dorothy, Marilyn, Caden, Anne, Deb, Mark, Rose, Bob, Nick, Artie, our siblings in Tanzania, and all the others we name silently in our hearts. And be born amidst those who we do not know, but need your presence desperately. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, and be born in the midst of weakness and need, and bring strength and hope to us all. All these things and whatever you see that we need, grant us, O God, for the sake of Christ who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, Father in, in heaven. heaven Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, 
and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The child is born in you whenever you bring good news to the oppressed, bind up the brokenhearted, and proclaim liberty to the captives. In all that you say and do, let the Lord be born in you. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Whoever will take it is given the word.